dear viewers of the Tom Photo channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm here with my Nikon D3300. I have made extensive reviews on Nikon D3400 and Nikon D3500, see the links in the description. But so far, not on the mighty Nikon D3300. It is so great and so affordable these days. I think chances are not bad at all that after watching this video you will start to like the D3300 more than the more recent D3400 and D3500. Of the D3000 series cameras, the D3300 was the first one to remove the low pass filter and go all the way to 24 megapixels. People liked that because no low pass filter meant more detailed photos and more megapixels offered more options to crop the image. The D3300 was a proper camera. It has less options than the professional grade cameras, but the image quality was right up there with the professionals. And that's what really matters. In some sense, the next two cameras that followed in the series, the D3400 and the D3500, took several steps in the wrong direction as many users would agree. At those times, size mattered more than it had before and the DSLRs were under a lot of pressure to become tiny to compete with the oncoming wave of the hybrid cameras. So the D3400 and T3500 were stripped of two very important features, external microphone port and the sensor cleaning system by vibration. For some people these were true deal breakers. Add that the D3300 is said to have a better low light performance, and I'll have a separate video on that soon, than the following models of the series. And you have every reason to ask why anyone would change their D3300 for a newer model. The newer models are smaller and that's a bonus. They take more photos with a single battery charge and that's a bonus. However, their flashes are weaker and part of the difference in the number of photos may lie right there. The real life differences therefore may not be that large. The newer cameras offer better connectivity. The D3400 has a Bluetooth for accessing your photos. I have a D3400 and I love that camera, but I'm ashamed to say that I've never used Bluetooth, never had that need. What I want of a camera is to behave like a proper camera. Connectivity topics are very secondary to me, but you might be different. Maybe you need to stay connected more. The software of the newer cameras is newer and perhaps improved. With some unknown trick, the D3400 can get a bit better color depth and better dynamic range out of its sensor than the D3300. I personally suspect this is at the expense of low light ISO performance that tends to be a bit of a weak spot for these Nikon DSLRs in general compared to the Fujifilm cameras that I use a lot for example. If you have more info on that please share it in the comments. The D3300 is called an entry level camera. I never understood this notion. This makes it sound like you need to replace your camera every so many weeks or months. Instead, I like to talk about image quality, durability and convenience of use, and whether or not you can do what you want with your camera. And I maintain that the Nikon D3300 is among one's best options to check those boxes on the list. Let's take a closer look at the camera. It looks very much like the cameras before and after it. The grip part of the body has been changing. It got deeper and narrower after the D3300, but the D3300 fits very comfortably in my hand. I enjoy using it. The camera is all plastic and you might think that's a problem. Maybe Nikon is using the best plastic in the world, but this material is impossible to scratch. The bottom of the camera is not scratched even after intensive tripod use. I'm constantly amazed. The back screen is not touch sensitive and is not tilting. I'd like tilting screen for close to the ground photography, but it's really alright. The camera has a live view accessible via the LV button. Now you can see on the screen what the sensor sees. Your camera is now a bit like a hybrid camera. This works well for video, but for photography it is not so good because you'll get a major lag between pressing the shutter release and taking the photo. Plus your focusing is not as accurate as you get with the viewfinder with its 11 focus points. Overall the spot focusing via viewfinder is impressively accurate on this camera and the focusing speed with the kit lens is not bad at all. My lens in front of the camera today is mostly the Nikkor AFS 18-55 VR2. Check the links under the video to see my overview of Nikon's kit lenses. Let's take a closer look at the top of the camera. 
you'll notice a very big and fat function button on the right side and no matching button on the left. I find that the main thing I want to do during photographing is to change the exposure compensation. There is no convenient single exposure compensation button. The D3300 requires that you hold down a tiny button, turn the back dial at the same time, and then also either look at the screen or into the viewfinder to change this value. For me this is too cumbersome. Why not put a separate button on the left side for this function? That spot is not taken. This is the main problem I have with its functionality. Another small thing is that the timer mode forgets itself and you have to set the timer again and again. When I'm photographing from the tripod in low light and I don't want the camera shake to ruin my pictures, I need the self timer to stay on until I'm done photographing. Most other things I really like about this camera. The I button will take you to the summary screen of selected functions. This is very handy. You can make the relevant changes right there. This is great. And you can press a button while in the I mode to see short descriptions what these choices do. This is good for beginners. I always like Nikon's menus. I find them intuitive to use. You don't need to read the manual too much. You run through the menu a couple of times and it is more or less clear what options you have available to you. The video is HD and up to 60 frames per second and you can set your exposure manually. I find this nice. So you can even do slow motion. The camera cannot do 4K. You can focus during video by dragging the focusing area with a 4-way pad. In modern times, this is not considered the best solution, but we have to remind ourselves that the D3300 was released in 2014, so we were all 10 years younger back then. Overall, this camera is better at photography than it is at video. It will record your vacation video, but if you want better sound, bring a microphone. It can be a very simple one. Anything is better than the internal microphone that also hears the lens sound. Whatever you're gonna say about this camera, you cannot say anything bad about its photo quality and dependability. These two aspects make a camera, as far as I'm concerned. Combine this with very rapidly falling prices of the camera, affordable lenses, and you got yourself a winner. I still recommend that you buy this camera, absolutely. Nikon has done a very good job with this camera. Thanks so much for listening to my opinion on this nice camera. Please consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like if you think this is appropriate and will work for you. Enjoy your photography. Goodbye.